Welcome to episode 92 of Norse Myths, Legends, and Folktales. My name is Mylinda Butterworth, and today we continue the saga of Thorstein and learn the fate of Thorstein and Bella and how they became foster brothers in chapters 19 and 20 of Viking Sun. Chapter 19. Now, our saga must turn to Thorstein at the time when he was returning home from his warfare, bound for Grimm, the Bonde, for his brother Thor resided in that island. Yoko got news of Thorstein's voyages. He spoke to Okotam and asked him to try his tricks and by witchcraft bring about a storm against Thorstein in order that he might be drowned together with all his men. Okotam said he could try, no matter what the result might be. Then was his incantations. He caused so tremendous a storm against Thorstein that his ships were wrecked amid the tumultuous waves, and all his crew perished. Thorstein held out well a long time, but at last he became tired of swimming, and then he had reached the surf, and was beginning to sink down. At this moment he saw an old woman, of very great stature, wading from the shore out toward him. She wore a shriveled skin coat which fell to her feet in front, but was very short behind, and her face was very large and like that of a monster. She stepped over to him and, seizing him up from the sea, and said, "'Will you accept life from me, Thorstein?' answered he. "'Why should I not? Or what is your name?' she said. "'My name is uncommon. It is Skelnefja, but you will have to make some sacrifice in return for your life,' said he. "'What is it?' she answered. "'That you grant me the favour that I ask of you,' said Thorstein." You will ask nothing from me that will not bring me good luck. But when shall the favor be granted? Answered she, not yet. Then she bore him ashore, and now he had come to that island which was governed by Grimm. She then wrestled with him till he grew warm upon they departed, each wishing the other success. Then she walked on, for she said she had other places to call on. But Thorstein went home to the byre, and his meeting there with his brother was the cause of great joy to both of them. And so Thorstein remained there during the winter, and very much was made of him. Now we must return to Yokel and Okotam, as they were sailing homeward. One very fine day it happened that their ship was suddenly shrouded in darkness, accompanied by such a biting frost and cold that nobody on board dared to turn his face against the wind. They all covered their faces with their clothes, but when the weather had cleared off again, they saw Okotom hanging in the hole of the master head, and he was dead. Yoko looked upon his death as a great loss, and returning to his kingdom, he remained quiet. Early the next spring, Thorstein and Thor busked themselves for a voyage, intending to visit their father Viking, and when they came as far as to Deep River before they knew of it, Yokel came there too. <clears throat> Yokel came there too with thirty men. A combat between them straightway began. Yokel was very eager in the fight, and so was his brother Grimm. Thor and Thorstein defended themselves bravely, and for a long time passed before these brothers received any wounds from Yokel and his men. For not only did Thorstein deal heavy blows, but Angervaldil also bit iron as well as cloth. Thor defended himself excellently, although he did not have his kisa, which he had left at home. He and Grimm met and they fought very bravely. Still, the end of the fight was that Grimm fell to the ground, dead. 
By this time, Thorstein had slain 18 men, but as might be expected, he was both tired and wounded, and so was Thor. Then the brothers turned their backs together and still defended themselves well. Now, Jokul, with his 11 men, pursued them and made so valiant an attack that Thor fell. Then Thorstein defended himself manfully until there remained no more than Jokul and three of his men. But then Jokul stabbed Thorstein with his sword, wounding him in the upper part of his thigh. And Jokul, being a strong man and bearing on the sword with all his might while he stabbed him, Thorstein, who was very tired and was standing on the very edge of the river bank, fell down from the crag, while it was all that Jokul could do, nothing to stop himself, so that he did not fall himself. After this, Jokul went home, thinking he had slain Thorstein and Thor, and having come home, he remained quiet. But now it is to be told of Thorstein that he, having fallen from the crag, alighted upon a grassy spot among the rocks. But being tired and wounded, he was unable to move, and yet he was in his full senses after he had fallen. Angervaldil fell out of his hands, and down into the river. Thorstein was lying there betwixt life and death, and expecting soon to breathe his last. But before he had lain thus very long, he saw Skelnefja coming. She was clad in her skin gown, and looked no fairer than before. She approached the place where Thorstein was laying, and said, "'It seems to me, Thorstein, that your misfortune will never come to an end.' and now you must seem all ready to be breathing your last, or will you now grant me the favor upon which we formerly agreed? Said Thorstein, I do not now find myself able to render much of any service to you. She answered, My request is that you promise to marry me, and then I will try to heal your wounds. Said Thorstein, I do not know as I had better make that promise, for to me you look like a monster, said she. Still, you have your choice between these two things. You must either marry me or lose your life, and in the latter case you break the bargain of the oath which you swore to me when you pledged yourself to grant my favor after I have saved you at Grimm's Island, said Thorstein. There is much truth in your words, and it is better to keep one's promise. Hence, I vow that I will marry you, and you will prove to be my best helper in time of need. Still, I should like to stipulate with you that you give me my sword back so that I may wear it in case my life is prolonged. Says she, so be it. And having taken her up in her skin gown, she leaped as if quite unencumbered up over the crags, and proceeded until a large cave was before them. Having entered the cave, she bandaged Thorstein's wounds and laid him on a soft bed, and within seven nights he was almost healed. One day, Skelnefja had left the cave, and in the evening she came back with a sword, which was then dripping wet and she gave it to Thorstein. Said she, Now I have saved your life twice, and given you your sword back, of which you are fonder than of aught else. And a fourth thing, which is of great importance to both of us, is that <laughs> I hanged Okatom. And yet you have completely rewarded me, for you have delivered me from the spellbound condition into which Okatom enchanted me. My name is Ingeborg. I am the daughter of King Skate and the sister of Bella. But my only means of delivery from bondage was that some man of noble birth should promise to marry me. Now that you have done this and I am freed from bondage, now you must busk yourself for leaving the cave and follow my advices, and you will find my brother Bella and four men with him, along with the latter, will be his land warden, Thorgrim Colby. From Yokel, 
they have received some money offered as a price for your head, and they will begin to battle with you. I do not care if you kill Thorgrim and his companions, but spare the life of my brother Bella, for I should like to have you become his foster brother, and if you have a mind to marry me, then go with him home to Song and woo me. I shall be there before you, and it may be that I will look otherwise to you than now. Then they parted, and he had not gone far before he met Bella, accompanied by four men, and at their meeting Thorgrim said, It is good, Thorstein, that we have found each other. Now we shall try to win the price put upon your head by Jokul, said Thorstein. <laughs> it seems possible to me that you may lose the fee and forfeit your life too. Chapter 20 now we must tell about Thorstein that he was attacked by Bella and his men, but he defended himself well and bravely, and the result was that Thorgrim and three of his companions fell. Then Thorstein and Bella entered a new contest. Thorstein defended himself but would not wound Bella. Bella kept on attacking Thorstein until the latter seized him and set him down at his side, saying, You are wholly in my power. But I will not only give you your life, but also offer you an opportunity to become my foster brother. You shall be king, and I shall be her, sir. And in addition to this, I will rule your sister Ingeborg and get her estate as song as a dowry, said Bella. This is no easy matter, for my sister has disappeared so that nobody knows what has become of her, answered Thorstein. She may have come back, said Bella. I do not see how she could get a doughtier fellow than you are, and I give my full consent to this proposition. Having settled this with their words of honor, they went to Song. Bella soon became aware that his sister had indeed come back, and that she had not lost any of that blooming beauty which she had had before in her youthful days. Thorstein began his suit and asked that Ingeborg might become his wife. This was resolved upon. As a dowry she got from her home all the possessions lying on the other side of the fjord. The buyer where Thorstein resided was called Framnes, but the buyer governed by Bella was called Strystrand. The next spring Thorstein and Bella set out to wage wars, having five ships, and during the summer they harried far and wide, and got enough of booty, but in the fall they returned home again having seven ships. The next summer they went out to herring again, but got very little booty, for all Vikings shunned them, and having reached the small rocky island called Elfaskir, they anchored in a harbor in the evening. Thorstein and Bella went ashore and crossed that Ness peninsula, toward which their ships were lying. But having crossed the nest, they saw twelve ships covered with black tilts. On shore they saw tents from which smoke arose, and they seemed to be sure that these tents must be occupied by cooks. Having taken on a disguise, they went thither, and having come to the door of a tent, they both placed themselves in it in such a manner that the smoke did not find any way out. The cooks made use of abusive words and asked what sort of beggars they were, as they were guileful enough to want them burnt alive or smothered. Bella and Thorstein made an ugly disturbance and answered with hoarse voices that they came to get food or said they, Who is the excellent man who commands the fleet lying here at the shore? said there, <laughs> You must be a stupid old man if you have not heard of Ufa, who is called Ufa the Unlucky, and is the son of Hairbrand, the Big-Headed. This Ufa is the brother of Otenfox, and we know there are no men under the sun more celebrated than these two brothers, said Thorstein. You tell good tidings. Shortly after, Thorstein and Bella returned to their own men, and early the next morning, having busked themselves, they rowed around the nest and immediately shouted the cry of battle. The others then quickly busked themselves, took their weapons, and a venomous battle began. 
Ufa had more men and was himself a most valiant warrior. They fought for a long time in such a manner that it could be seen which side would gain the victory. But on the third day, Thorstein began to board the dragon commanded by Ufa the Unlucky, and he was followed without delay by Bella, and a great havoc they made, killing all who were between the prow and the mast of the ship. Then Ufa came from the poop and attacked Bella, and they fought for some time until Bella began to get wounds from Ufa, who handled his weapon dexterously and dealt heavy blows. Meanwhile, Thorstein came up with his Angervadil and gave Ufa a blow with it. The sword hit the helmet, split the whole body, and the burning clad man from head to foot. And Angervadil struck against the mast beam so forcefully that both its edges sunk out of sight. Said Bella, this blow of yours, foster brother, will live in the memory of men as long as the north is peopled. Hereupon they offered to the Vikings two terms, either to give up and save their lives, or to have a combat. But they preferred to accept a quarter from Thorstein and Bella. The latter gave pardon to all, and they eagerly accepted. Here much booty was taken. And having stayed three nights, during which time the wound were healed, they repaired home in the autumn. And here is where I end my tale for today. But I'll be back with more tales, many more tales. Until then, my friends, enjoy the journey.